and happy Resurrection Sunday. My name is Pastor Philip Brown of the Refuge Church of Scotland Neck, located at 419 East 12th Street in the town of Scotland Neck, just right up the street from here. And unless you've been under a rock somewhere deep down in the Grand Canyon, you probably know that many of the churches across the country have been closed because of the novel coronavirus. Well, a lot of us in the Christian community, and particularly among the clergy, have decided that we would bring the gospel to you all this Resurrection Sunday. And I'm with some of the folks from the Refuge Church of Scotland Bank, and that's my purpose today, to share the good news with you, our neighbors, here in this neighborhood of the town to declare to you that Jesus Christ is risen and because he lives we have access to eternal life because he lives we have salvation before I go any further I'm going to begin this outreach this resurrection Sunday outreach with a prayer wherever you are under the sound of my voice pray with me pray you may say, I don't know how to pray. Well, prayer is very easy. All you got to do is talk to God. He hears everything. And not only does he hear, well, I'll let you know something. He answers prayer. And there's nothing that you can bring before God in terms of a petition, in terms of a plea, in terms of an intercessory prayer, in terms of just a desire or want that God cannot do. Because all power in heaven and in earth is in his hand. So I'm going to pray now. Lord Jesus Christ, great Savior and mighty God, I thank you for the opportunity to bring to our neighbors this Resurrection Sunday the good news that, Lord, you are alive and well and still in the business of saving souls. Lord, I pray something that we say, something that is read, sang, sung rather, and preached will Touch someone, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you'll use it, Lord God, to take the word and sow it into the hearts, into the souls of someone in this community. Bring someone, Lord Jesus Christ, to the point of faith. Bring someone, Lord Jesus Christ, to the point of conversion. Bring someone, Lord Jesus Christ, to the point of true repentance, that they will turn to you in faith and say, what must I do to be saved? And Lord, before we close this prayer, Lord, rebuke the fowler, rebuke the evil one. Rebuke, Lord God, the spirits that bring doubt and disbelief. Rebuke, Lord Jesus Christ, those spirits that will snatch the word of God as soon as it reaches a soul's heart. Lord, rebuke Satan and every evil disguise he has on. Let your word go forth, ban it all across the neighborhood. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we're praying that you save someone this day. You bring someone out of darkness this day. That you deliver someone, Lord God, from the bondage of sin and Satan this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to ask my son Joshua to come forth and he's going to read the scripture for this Resurrection Sunday. Mark chapter 16. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said amongst themselves, who will roll, roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. 
You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Blessed to read none of the word. In your place to pay the penalty for your sins and mine. God so loved the world, the word of God declares to us in the gospel of John, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus did not come into the world, the scripture continues to condemn any of us, but that through him, we all would be saved. That's what all this, this resurrection Sunday is all about. God's love toward us to the extent that he died for you, that you would have freedom from sin, you would have liberty from sin, and you could have newness of life in Christ through the new birth and that born again relationship with the living God who is Jesus Christ. My friend, God loves you. I'm going to say it again. He loves you and he cares about you. He wants to save you and he wants to free you from sin. You might say, I don't need to be free from sin. All of us need to be free from sin. And one of the first things that Jesus did in coming into the world was to destroy the power of sin on people's lives. And all you have to do is believe in him. Salvation is free. It won't cost you a dime. There's nothing you can do to earn it. There's nothing you can do to purchase it. All you have to do is have faith. The Bible declares, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. The Bible again declares to us in Romans chapter 10, they that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. All you have to do is just believe. Believe and call upon him and the Lord will save you. At this time, I'm going to ask my wife to come on up and she's going to give us a lecture.
Miss Janet. I'd like to call to your attention what is recorded in the Gospel of Mark. And I'm going to pick it up, Mark chapter 16, verse 14. If you have a Bible, you can read along with me as I read. If not, just listen. And the scripture declares, later he appeared to the eleven, the he being Jesus, as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I want to call your attention again to verse uh, 14. And the scripture says that he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. If I had to title this message, it would simply be, please believe. Please believe. Now, contrary to what you might think this day, more often called Easter, but in many circles of Christianity, it is called Resurrection Sunday because it is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For many people, this is a day to get dressed up and go to church, except most of the churches across the country, or at least a lot of the churches across the country, are closed. But contrary to that notion that people go to church and fill the churches up, most people aren't even going to church at all. I came across a, a, a bit of a research that was conducted just a couple of years ago, maybe three, four years ago. And it said that while most Americans declare themselves to be Christian, 80% of people in the United States declare themselves to be Christian, less than half actually go to church. And those that do go to church, attend church for a minimum of twice a month. In other words, most people aren't going to church at all. So really, even though the churches are closed, for most people, it's not a bother for them because they're not going anyway. But having said that, because so few people are actually engaged in any kind of active relationship with the Lord, because so few people are actually reading God's Word. Well, there's another uh, research that was done by the American Bible Society just like maybe two years or so. And it said only 14% of people in this country polled actually read their Bible every day. 60% said they don't read the Bible enough. And 28% of people polled said they've never read the Bible at all. So that's a pretty bleak picture of the spiritual tone of our nation. While we say in one sense that we are Christian and we believe in Jesus, what we actually live out each and every day is in stark contrast to that. People don't worship, people aren't reading the word, and it's evident in the type of society we have. It's evident in the failure in marriages and the high divorce rate is evident in the high crime rate in this country and, and the, the high murder rate in this nation. It's evident in the suicide rate. It's evident in the drug addiction and the alcohol abuse. It's evident in the sexual crimes that are committed. It's evidence in the number of people that actually commit crimes and are convicted and are doing time in our nation's prisons. It's evident in just the fact that overall, people don't believe in God whatsoever. I was thinking about this and preparing for this message, and it came to me 
that if all of the people who declare themselves to be Christians really got together in faith and prayed the way our Lord empowered us to, this coronavirus would have died in its tracks. We wouldn't have had, we wouldn't have over 20,000 people dead from it. We wouldn't have over several hundred thousand people sickened by it. Our hospitals wouldn't be overwhelmed and we wouldn't have all the massive layoffs. If everybody who believed and acted upon their belief, we could have knocked out the novel coronavirus way a long time ago. But because of the unbelief, because of the unbelief of so many people, even people who call themselves Christians, well, this disease has been allowed to just ravage our nation and we still can't put an end to it. Jesus was very upset with his disciples on the day that he came back from the grave, the day that he was resurrected from among the dead because he had told them three times that he was going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. They would scourge him. They would beat him. They would turn him into the hands of the Roman authorities. They would condemn him to die and crucify him. But on the third day, he would be resurrected from the dead. And here he was resurrected from the dead, just as he said he was. And most of the people who were his disciples did not believe it. Even when they had eyewitness accounts of people who saw that Jesus was resurrected and those eyewitnesses went and told the other disciples, most of the disciples did not believe it. And the Lord rebuked them for their hardness. The scripture says he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Well, guess what? Many people today are unbelieving and have a hardness of heart when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to the good news, when it comes to believing in Jesus Christ. But if you could just believe God, if you could allow the grace of God to come in your life, wonderful things will happen for you. Amen. Jesus declared, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. Now, when the Lord speaks about condemnation, he doesn't use it in the sense that we use it. Condemnation, when the way the Lord uses it, means being put in a place that you are eternally separated from God. A place of perpetual torment simply because of your unbelief. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not want to go to a place where I am in perpetual torment simply because I did not believe in God. Don't know about you. I don't want to go to a place like that. Amen. Day after day after day after day after day, endless days, I'm being punished because of my unbelief and hardness of heart. And my friend, that's what's going to happen to you if you just turn a deaf ear to the gospel. That's what's going to happen to you if you just turn your back and harden your heart to the truth of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know the people that tell you that Jesus wasn't, he wasn't the Christ, and they say he's not God, and they say he was nothing but a man, but all that's a lie. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and I'm going to let you in on something. Jesus Christ is God. He was the express image of the Godhead in bodily form, the scripture reveals to us. So when they saw Jesus walking the earth in ancient Jerusalem, in ancient Israel, 2,000 years ago, what they didn't realize was that was God on earth. And what was God's purpose for coming down to earth in the form of a man? His purpose was singular, and that was to bring salvation to humankind and guess what he's still doing it today 2,000 years after his crucifixion 2,000 years after his resurrection Jesus Christ is still down here on earth walking around seeking those in need of salvation he said when he was on earth 
I come to seek and to save those that are lost. Well, all of us are lost. I know you might say that wrong, me preacher, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah, but the reality is we all must be born again. The reality is we all must repent. The reality is we all must be baptized for the remission of our sins. The reality is that none of us are righteous, not in God's sight. For the Bible declares we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if God would allow it, if it wasn't for his grace, if it weren't for his love, if it weren't for his mercy and his compassion, and God just allowed us to just go about our life, we would die in our sin and we would be condemned to eternal condemnation. We'd be condemned to eternal torment. But he doesn't want that for us because he loves humanity so much. So my friend, wherever you are, under the sound of my voice, you might have heard, I know those of you who have seen me over the years come out here and stand on this corner and preach to you the gospel. And you look at me, you listen to me, and you go, well, that's nice preacher, and you go on about your business. You go on and you light your cigarette up, you go on and get your liquor, you go on and turn your TV. Some of y'all turn the radio up on me right now so you don't have to hear me. But the Bible declares when you hear the word of God, don't harden your heart. Don't sit there and turn a deaf ear. I'm here on this corner because this is the will of God for me to do this day, to bring you God's word. Why? Because he wants to save you. Amen. He wants to save you. He wants to save you from sin. He wants to save you from Satan. All Satan wants to do is keep you in spiritual darkness. He wants to keep you in bondage. He wants to keep you living your sinful life because Satan knows if you keep living your sinful life, you're going to die in those sins and you're going to be lost for eternity. And he knows that he's going into eternal condemnation and he wants to take as many people with them as possible. So he wants to keep on doing what you're doing. Go ahead, keep on doing. Keep on living an unclean life. Keep on living in unrighteousness. Go ahead, keep on committing sex outside of marriage. Keep on getting high, keep on cussing, keep on being hateful, keep on doing what you're doing. Live your life, because you're going to die in your sin. That's Satan's goal, but that's not God's goal. Amen. God's goal is to save you Amen. and free you, free you from sin, free you from the bondage of Satan, and bring you into the newness of life. The Bible declares if any person be in Christ, they are a new creation. All things that passed away, behold, all things become new. The Lord wants you to have that new birth, that born-again relationship. He wants you to know him in the pardoning of your sins and in the fellowship of his Holy Spirit. And all you have to do to receive the newness of life, all you have to do to receive God's wonderful salvation is just believe. Just believe. That's all he says. Believe. He that believes will be saved. He that does not believe will be condemned. My friend, wherever you are, I don't care how young you are, how old you are, God wants to save you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, the true and living God, the only God, wants to save you. And he wants to save you now. The Bible declares today is the acceptable day of salvation. He wants to save you today. No, not tomorrow, not next week, not three years from now. Today he wants to save you. Salvation is available to you today. Jesus said this, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. If you're troubled, come to Jesus. If you're having problems in your health, in your relationship, can't find work, your life is just miserable right now, you can't sleep at night, you're overcome with anxiety and hopelessness and despair, come to Jesus. You say, well, I'll come to Jesus. What's he going to do for me? He's going to save you. And he's going to ease, he's going to take all those burdens away. And in replace of all those burdens, He's going to give you the wonderful gift of salvation. He's going to give you joy unspeakable and peace that you've never experienced before. 
And even in the midst of your most trying situations, you will still have the victory over them because God will be in your life. My friend, wherever you are, this Resurrection Sunday, Resurrection Sunday 2020, make up your mind you're going to get saved today. You're going to get saved today. Don't wait till the coronavirus gets in your lungs. God forbid. Don't wait for something bad to happen. It might be too late then. Return to him in faith now. Repent of your sins. What does repentance mean? It's not simply saying I'm sorry, although there's an aspect for saying, God, I'm sorry, but it's sorry to the extent that you say, Lord, I don't want to live a sinful life anymore. Yeah. That's what repentance is. It's a change in the way you think, the change in the way you feel in respect to living a sinful life. Repent. The Bible declares it was repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For it's God's promise to you. To you. And God does not break his promises. My friend, wherever you are, come to Jesus. As my wife sang a little while ago, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. If you're sick in your body, he can heal you. You don't have to worry about catching coronavirus. God can deal with that and everything else you might have in your life. You've got money issues, come to Jesus. He can supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Got issues with the children? Come to Jesus. He'll save you and your children. For the Bible declares, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your household. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. He will save you. Don't let this day go by. And you just say, well, that's nice, preacher. But I just say, I ain't ready yet. Don't do that. Because time is winding up. And your time, all of our time, for all of us is winding up. And so when you can get saved, when you hear his word, receive it. And do what he tells you to do. Come to Jesus today. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come and all you have to do is believe. Believe on the Lord and you will be saved. Call upon him and you will be saved. Do it. Do it today. I'm pleading with you. Do it today. And God will save you right now. I'm going to close this out with a prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, great Savior and mighty God, I thank you. I love you, Lord God, for saving me. I worship you, Lord God, for you're the only God to be worshipped. And I thank you for this opportunity to share with all the folks here in this community your glorious good news. And that good news, Lord, is that you're alive and well and still in the business of saving souls. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, someone that heard me preach today, they heard the word of God being preached today, that, Lord, you will touch them, you will deal with them, and you will break up that hardened heart. Someone, Lord, is unbelieving, and they have a hardened heart. Lord God, please, I pray, break up that hardened heart. Break up, Lord, that stony heart, and let the good news penetrate to the depth of their soul and cause someone to turn from a sinful life in faith, turn to you. This I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, save today, up and down 12th Street, Watson Avenue, all across the area, save, hallelujah, save Jesus, save, save Lord God, I pray. Rebuke Satan, the evil, evil disguise he has on. Destroy his yoke on someone's life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor Philip Brown with just a a handful of folks from the church, all of who happen to be part of my family. <laughs> praise God. I thank and praise the Lord for my wife and my sons being here with me. Our purpose was to share a bring a short service to you this Resurrection Sunday because we know that most of the churches are closed or they're doing some type of outreach themselves. And so we pray that something we've done this day, you'll take it to heart. Take it to heart. Think about it. Reflect on it. Give Jesus a chance. Give him. You tried everything else. 
Now try Jesus. Once again, from the Refuge Church of Scotland Neck, right up the street, that church, right, you all know where it is. And even though we're not in full operation now because of the stay in place order, as soon as that's lifted, the doors of the church will be open to you and yours, and you can come and worship with us. You can also join us on our prayer line, 